Hello? All right, this seems to be working. Um, so welcome to this talk. It's called Geospatial Analysis of Social Media Posts with Elasticsearch. And uh, I'm Michael Kaiser. Um, I work in a small um, natural language processing consulting company called TextData. Uh, we are based here in Berlin, just a few hundred meters from away. So basically, uh, the background for this talk is this was a little fun project that I worked on for a while. And um, I put the code now on GitHub so you can actually look at all the code that I'm going to show you today. And maybe some of you feel even inspired to add something to it. I would be very glad. And uh, hopefully you learn something today. So what do we want to do? We want to use Elasticsearch to browse and discover what's happening on social media. And we're paying a special aspect to uh, the spatial nature of the data. So we want to see what's happening around, like you, for example, right now, or anywhere else in Berlin. And we also want to perf uh, perform some more advanced analytics um, to detect trend, trend, trends and uh, uh, um, activity hotspots. And so we want to see what's interesting right now at a certain point. And this talk is a fairly uh, introductory level. So I think even if you have never heard about Elasticsearch before, you probably can follow this. And everything else I explain, I, I hopefully explain in a way that it should be understandable to everybody. Um, OK, we're going to talk a bit about social data, Twitter, Instagram, Foursquare. What can you get there? How does the data look like? Uh, how do you fetch it, store it, and search with it with Elasticsearch? Uh, and we talk about specifically about geospatial analysis, so geohashes and some custom build analysis that I'm going to show you. Um, and we have an outlook, so what could, could be done better, because by no way what I'm presenting to you is the final answer. The Java code is on GitHub, right? It's really, uh, the maxim here is to keep it simple. Before I loaded it up, uh, I think two days ago, I just removed everything that was, uh, was clutter and uh, didn't really add much. And there's lots of space for improvements. All right, social data. So social data is uh, fairly new, and it's interesting because it continuously creates massive amounts of data. So that's for, for tech people like, like us here in this room. This is very nice. You just have a constant stream of data coming in, and you can do amazing things with it. Um, it can be fetched in real time. The APIs are um, for low value, uh, low volume, non-commercial use. They're free, so you can easily start something at home and, and just uh, see how it works. If then you want to go commercial, you usually have, sometimes you have to pay. Um, this data contains text, it contains images, it contains geo-coordinates. So there's lots of stuff to play with. Um, yeah, but uh, on the other hand, I mean, it's lots of noises there as well, as we will see. So creating real insights isn't an easy problem, and it's uh, worked a lot on in industry and research at the moment. So, for example, we have 500 million tweets a day, we have 600 million Instagram photos a day, and 6 million Foursquare check-ins. These are the, uh, the data sources we're going to work with. And if you then take a closer look, you find out that about 5% of the tweets have geo-coordinates, 100% of the Instagram photos have geo-coordinates. There's a little star there uh, in order to um, tell you that although 100% of the Instagram photos have geo-coordinates, unfortunately, the geo-coordinates are not always where the photo was taken. So sometimes you get geo-coordinates in the middle of Berlin and it's the Taj Mahal from India. I mean, you get these cases and that's just somebody took a photo in India of the Taj Mahal and hasn't uploaded it until he was in Berlin and kind of like checked it in his host hostel and then he had an internet connection uploaded it. Um, which is just, which adds to the noise that you, that you have. And um, the four, four square check-ins, of course, are, have geo coordinates as well. So here's something we get from Twitter. Um, there's just a text, looking forward to Berlin buzzword. So that was me posting that last Wednesday. Um, it, at that point, because I, tated, uh, I took it directly after it was posted, it wasn't retweeted, um, it uh, wasn't favorited by, by anyone, and so on and so forth. Um, but you can see it has a unique ID, it has a timestamp, um, it as the user is basically given, and you have the coordinates. So that's important for us. We will come back to this. Instagram gives you something like this. It's pretty much the same thing as you can see. Um, you also have location, you have timestamps, you have unique IDs, you have the user. Um, but of course, the JSON structure is different. And this is what you get from Foursquare. 
Um, so this is a, a, a trending place on Foursquare, which is the local market at Winterfeldplatz, which is in Western Berlin. Uh, it has coordinates here, and you can get some statistics about how many check-ins they have, uh, how many, from how many users these check-ins are, how many users have given, uh, how many tips there are, so users telling you, you know, that the best coffee is here, and that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, you get a URL for the web page, and also a number about how many people um, are there at the point when we retrieved it. So this is all nice, and as you can see, this is all JSON data, so if you use Elasticsearch, it's pretty easy to just put this into Elasticsearch, actually. We could just take it from the, from the APIs and directly save it into Elasticsearch. However, uh, the problem is that it's difficult for us then to search on it because like all the fields have different names. So what we need is basically, we need an, uh, a more complicated structure. You have a little hierarchy, class hierarchy, we have an abstract post, which just says, you know, the text and kind of like uh, coordinates and index date all in the same field. And then kind of like we have the, the three um, types of posts that have seen you, which all have their special properties that are not covered in uh, up there. So what that would mean is basically that we transform the Twitter JSON into that, and if you look at the code, it's online on GitHub, about like 30% are just about that, basically, right? You just need to take every field and kind of transform it into something else. But then you end up something that you have um, here on the, on the right side from your point of view. And um, we can easily search on that because it's the same um, for all of those posts. Um, Elasticsearch is usually... Um, you don't have to do much to start, to start working with Elasticsearch, right? You just throw your JSON in, and Elasticsearch is pretty good at figuring out, you know, this is a text field, this is a double, um, this is an integer value, and so on and so forth. It doesn't, however, really work with the coordinates, and that is something that uh, we really want to work with. So what we're basically doing here is we need to set up a mapping. Uh, that is what we see on the right again, and we just need to tell Elasticsearch that that coordinate field there, uh, coordinates field, that is of type... Um, GeoPoint. Um, that means it will set up a spatial index. So we can easily search and do distance calculation on that. Otherwise, uh, Elasticsearch would assume that these are just double numbers. Let and long would just be double numbers and you couldn't really uh, do much nice things with it. Um, other than that, we'd, uh, uh, it works with Elasticsearch out of the box. Um, so by now, we just have all these things in Elasticsearch, basically. And uh, we can already think about uh, querying it. And so the only thing you, uh, basically there are two things you have to do. Uh, you set up a query and you set up a filter for the query. And you see the Java code on top and then like for the, uh, for the filtered query, um, the chase structure down there as well. So basically what we do, we run on, uh, we pick the field coordinates. Um, we give him the latitude and longitude that we want to search for. We say, uh, we have a certain distance and meter. We want to do this computation in memory um, just because it's faster and because we are on a planet Earth and the Earth is not flat. Uh, we use this uh, ARC calculation methods to compute the distance. And um, then the search response here, that is basically the query. Um, so we, we tell it which index uh, we find the data. Um, we use a match all query that is basically, first of all, telling you to take everything that is there and then filter it. And um, it's basically filtered by geo distance, uh, as you can see down there, through a thousand meter from a specific point. And if you would want to uh, restrict your search to uh, not just everything, but um, to a specific um, type of text query. Just say we want everything that has bar in it or, or food. So we just want to want to see where all the places are where people, um, you know, post something about food. Then we could just simply go there and, and give it a query string and just, you know, here we have this and that and thus. We would just put there, you know, food or whatever, and then kind of like search for the for the geo distance. All right. So I can quickly show you. What if... So we have the fetches here. I'm just running it. I hope the internet connection is good enough. Uh -huh. oh. Of course, we should start Elasticsearch before this. That would be a good idea. That's Elasticsearch. And here we have a little web server, just so they can see the results. Um, it's usually quickly 
pretty fast at starting up. Okay. We restart. And what you can see here, for example, is this is a streaming, streaming uh, fetcher from Twitter. Um, so the code is online. I'm not going into details here right now. Um, so what you see is that whenever a new tweet is issued, so if you would tweet something now with geo-coordinate, it should show up here. Um, so every new tweet that is issued, if it's in a certain um, bounding box, um, will, be, um, will be fetched and will, be, will arrive here and we, we put it in the database. So, and once we have that, and because we have the web server running as well, um, I can just run the query that I showed you before, and we would see something like this. Right, so this is a little web into web face that just runs the query that I showed you before, and we can see that there is trending right now on Foursquare is Berlin buzzwords, right? That's around here. The, um, some people are, are not happy with their badge, apparently. Uh, that's a group photo of some guys, you know, and people commenting on talks, that sort of stuff. Of course, this is not the only thing that's happening around here, so we have, like, other stuff in there as well, and so on and so forth there. You know, a lot of it is about Berlin buzzwords, unsurprisingly, somewhat. So we could see here that it's indeed, like, around us. So the little dot here is where we are, and this is, like, the Twitter post, the Instagram post, and so on and so forth. And we could go to another point, uh, to another place, and just click on the map, and then it would do the query with that coordinates, and go back, and I don't know what that is. Um, you can see this is somewhere in Kreuzberg, and it's quite a different scene, right? Um, this is very nice. This is a uh, barter shift, so it's, it's a sunny day, so people are having fun at the beach. And, you know, it's, it's, it's generally... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's generally, it's, it's a very nice tool to, to find food, right? If, if you're usually somewhere, you can just like take it out and scroll through because so many people are taking um, images of their food. Um, there's not that much here. Also, in the evening, it's nice to find where the next party is. Um, okay, I mean, this is basically what we've done so far, and it was really pretty simple. Uh, that was just like with a, with a query that I showed you and setting up the index uh, to run properly. Okay. But so far, we really haven't done much. We have taken the data in, we have put it in, 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 in the index, and we can search on it, which is, which is nice. Um, but we want to do a bit more than that. So we want to do some analysis on top of this. And so one thing that we're going to use actually... Ooh, what was that? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to use geohashes. Um, which essentially is a geocode system. It was invented by Guavo Niemeyer. And what it does, it subdivides space into buckets of arbitrary precision. And so, in the end, each location has a unique hash, and the location itself can be derived from the hash. It's in a public domain as well. If you haven't understood it now, that's very good, because I'm going to uh, uh, spend the next 10 minutes explaining it, um, how it works precisely. So this is the map of the world. That little marker is where we are. And um, what, what is happening now with geohashes is that the world is divided, like vertically, horizontally, and then vertically again, and more horizontally. And each, um, after each division, we assign like 0 or 1 to one part of the, uh, of, of the field. So, I, you know, I mean, uh, like America would have 0 here, and the, um, m the most part of the rest of the world, like 1. Then we do... a horizontal division along the equator, and we have 0, 1 for North America, 1, 1 is basically Europe and Asia, and so on and so forth. And we can continue doing that. And as you already see, um, by now the, the, uh, the field we are in, the square we are in, is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, and as you divide further, you're getting to smaller and smaller areas, and um, each of these has its unique hash. But because so far this is binary, if we really go down on a local level, our geohashes will become very long, and therefore um, 
what we're doing is we're switching from a binary um, representation of the data to a base32 representation of the data by using that um, table here. And what then happens is basically this we have seen already is that each one of these fields um, just gets a, a letter or um, a number assigned, a digit. And as I said, we dis uh, subdivide this further. And what then happens is we can zoom in, and I'm going to show you how that works. So again, here is log u. This is the slice of the world that represents u in geohash. This is u3. So it's Eastern Germany and Poland, largely. Um, Berlin and a bit of uh, Brandenburg, north of Berlin, is u33. Um, Southeast Berlin, U33D. We have like, this is basically Prenzlauer Berg, U33DC. Uh, Kastanien Allee area of Prenzlauer Berg, U33DCH. Here we have the Kultur Brauerei, which is U33DCHX. And this is already then pretty fine grained. This is roughly where we are at the moment. And now we have seven digits. This is roughly how GeoHash works. Work. Uh, the question is now, what is it good for? So if we index all the coordinates that we have, if we use the GeoHash of each of these posts to use it as, uh, to index it, then we can easily check like, whether there are any buckets there that have like, more posts in it than others. And we, can, so we could say maybe there's, this is kind of like a trending uh, area in town at the moment. And um, that's what we want to do. Um, but before we can do that, we uh, need to do one thing. We need to change the, the mapping in Elasticsearch. So that's what I showed you before. We set up the field coordinates as a geo point to tell Elasticsearch we want to do geo search on it. And what we do now is basically we say, OK, but also create a geo hash for each point. And um, precision search says, um, use the length 10. So far we have been at 7. That was uh, basically this room here roughly. So we could even further, which is probably too much, but we want to keep that flexibility. And then if you want to search for it, um, there is, I think, a newer syntax out there, but I like this one better because it explains nicely what's done. Um, we set up an aggregation. We give it a name. It's called geohash. Um, we run it on the field coordinates dot geohash, which we set up up there. And then we have a regular expression here, which just tells us, um, use the first seven digits. So we do that. And then we get, um, um, from the aggregation, we get a list of terms back. And in these terms, there are buckets. And uh, this will tell us, um, basically, which of the geohash that we have at the moment has the most posts in it. And I can also show you that more precisely. All right, so this, this part is this interesting part for now. Now we can see, I mean, we set it up to deal with seven digits. And we have like a bunch of geohash here that are trending. So there are 15 posts in this geohash in the last two hours. There are like 11 posts in that geohash. Unfortunately, with geohash, you really can't, you know, the geohash alone doesn't tell you much. You don't really, I mean, at least as a human, you can't really put this on a map. Um, okay, so much for that. Um, the question is just, are we done now? Now we have some buckets, and we know there's a lot of stuff happening here. And is this enough for our purpose to really find out um, where, where, you know, where the hotspots in this city are at the moment? And it's unfortunately not the case, really. And one of the issues here is uh, monologues, just meaning that um, they're just, you know, I mean, they're just users on Twitter, and they maybe in one hour they put out 50 tweets. And that's just one person. It doesn't really tell us that there's something happening at this, at this place. It's just one person. And uh, generally, some areas are more active than other. And rough, uh, rather, we would actually, what we like is we would like to know whether one area is more active at this point than it usually was, rather than, you know, in the center of Berlin, there's also always more, um, more uh, there are always more posts than somewhere out there in Brandenburg in the wildness. So what we've done so far, we found, we found these geohashes, but they're more or less just hypo hypotheses that need to be verified. And that's what we're trying to do now. And so what we're going to do here is um, 
So let's say we found that one of these squares that is uh, rectangles, actually, they're not really squares. Uh, one of these rectangles that is really uh, trending at the moment has a lot of posts coming from on is kind of like this room uh, or generally Kultur Brauerei. Right. Then what we would do is we would, uh, we have the hypothesis that something is happening here. We would again like to do three searches with Elasticsearch. Uh, one of them with a radius of 100 meter, another one with a radius of 200 meter, and a third with a radius of 300 meters, and would compute some scores on this. And what we're interested now is kind of like the unique users that post in them, in the, in the, in the small circle, in the medium circle, in the big circle. And then we can compute some very easy scores. Um, so the assumption here is that, as well, and sometimes you have events which are small, and sometimes you have events which are a bit bigger, but usually what we want to have is we want to have a, a, a certain area where there's more um, activity than the surrounding area. So what we do is at one point, we just take the, uh, the amount of um, unique posters in the blue area and divide it by the yellow area, and the other one we take the yellow area and divide it by the red area. Area. So one is for a small event, the other one would be for a bigger event, and we want to see actually that in that in the center of the spot there is more activity than around it. And we also have, this is the relative score basically. We also have an absolute score, which um, is just about how many people, how many um, posts are actually coming from this location, and we can then combine them. Actually, the formula is missing here, but we just throw it together by adding it up, and I can show that as well. Actually, was the part below here, so we ran that already. And here can you can see now that um, there was a hotspot around a certain place, around these coordinates, and we can see that um, within 100 meters, these are the the um, um, the, the posts. They're mostly from Instagram, all of them. Within 200 meters, we have those, and then within 300 meters. If you look at this string, that basically would tell you we have seven unique posters in a 100 meter radius, 15 unique posters within 200 meters, and 17 within 300 meters. So really we have like something that in the middle that is um, significantly higher than what is around. And um, that makes sense. I mean, if you're not really, it's... So there are lots of different users. And if you're not from Berlin, you might not know. Yesterday there was a um, there was a vote, not only in the European election, but about about the Tempelhofer Feld, which is uh, the disused airspace um, in uh, Tempelhof. And uh, there was a vote whether it should um, stay as it is, or whether it, uh, the Senate is allowed to build some houses there. And it seems like the people who organise the votes are currently uh, meeting there and discussing. Um, what's going on. So that is one hotspot that we found. And of course, there's something in Charlottenburg. Uh, for the names, basically, uh, sometimes with, a, with tweets or Instagram posts, um, you get a name, uh, a location name being sent out, and we just take that um, for the name. So there's something in, in uh, Charlottenburg. I don't know, know what there is. We have Martin Kropiusbau. I can tell you living here that there is a David Bowen, Alva Weyer exhibition there. So there we can see it. So lots of people seem to be on the exhibition at the moment. East Side Gallery, uh, constantly trending, like every tourist goes there and sends a picture of himself standing in front of the gallery. Art that happens every day. Bundestag, people visiting the Bundestag, of course. Um, that Bikini is a new shopping center, which is fairly nice and fairly popular. Um, airport is always to all the time trending. Little bit disappointed that we're not on it at the moment. You need to tweet more. Um, right. Okay, and then here we have some... In this demo that's running on a server, um, we have just, a, just a, a, a little web interface for it. And for example, you can see I've seen, shown, uh, I've shown you the barter shift before. So this is... Um, people hanging out in the sun and posting selfies. It's Instagram, after all. Um, and 100% Tempelhofer Feld. I don't know. This is people running kites. You know, it's also a sunny day, so people are out there enjoying their time. And... All right. Now, let's see. 
Berlin passports, finally. Um, so, um, that's not me, that's someone else. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see um, there's something is not with the web interface, something is not quite right. I mean, there are definitely two, there are more than two posts, and you also can see it's only one displayed. But, um, so that's a general idea, and this is the raw data. It just swallows some of the stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so this is already mostly what I wanted to show you. Um, um, there are, now it has to be said, I mean, this is very simplified. There are lots of things that um, are not... Um, are not as good as it should be, and, and some, quite a few things can be improved. For example, at the moment, we are assuming that the center of, a, of a, in, an individual geohash is the center of an event. That's, of course, not always the case, right? And that uh, brings some noise, some additional noise into the uh, computations. And you have, like, some locations which are trending every day. For example, uh, the train station, the airport, the Brandenburg Gate, the East Side Gallery. It's just like, you know, I mean, at every point in time when you would look there, it would be trending. So we need something like IDF, uh, TF-IDF for GeoHash, just to figure out, you know, this is constantly trending. This is not really interesting. And, um, yeah, as I said before, Instagram coordinates are not always where the photo was taken, so sometimes you have really weird stuff in there. And... Um, yeah, so actually what we want to do is kind of like we want to have a bit of more sophisticated analysis there, um, which is not on GitHub at the moment, but I gave a talk here last year, which in a sense then uh, talked a lot about that. And there's also a paper out there, and you can watch the talk online if you're interested. So this is what we did last year. I'm not going in, uh, in detail there. Um, Maybe just so I can, can, I can pick a few things. So we had a feature there which is called common theme. That might actually be very interesting. So we want to know uh, if, if there are a lot of posts coming from one location. We actually want to know whether they talk around, whether people there talk about the same topic or not. So we can see whether there's some overlap in engrams that actually helped. Um, and um, yeah, another thing that, that helped. Um, is like unique coordinates because quite often um, you have robots sending out tweets especially and they're always from exactly the same location. So if you have like a cluster where like the exactly the same location constantly tweets, then that's probably also something, uh, some noise there and it's not what we're looking for. And so on and so forth. So uh, that, is, was, uh, that work basically was done for the company I used to work for and so the code is locked in the company. So, But there's a paper so people can read it. Um, and again, I mean, as I said, I mean, with the analysis there, uh, there's lots of stuff that can be done better, I'm sure of it. And the code is on, on GitHub. And I mean, I would love if people would try some ideas, seriously. Um, I'm going to put, uh, put uh, the slides online, of course, and also going to put this on GitHub. I'm not going into detail here. If you want to run the code, it's fairly simple. The only complicated thing that you have to do is you have to get your own API tokens. So you have to register with, all of, uh, with um, uh, Twitter, with Instagram, and with Foursquare. And um, once you've done that, you need to add your API tokens, um, and then it will basically run. And yeah. That's it already. <laughs> Questions? Yeah? Okay. Ah, thanks. Okay, turning the microphone on is the trick. Where was the hand? Please raise it. Thanks. Hi. Um, regarding your problem that some locations are always or very often trending, did you consider to use some sort of um, moving average over, you know, slide, um, sliding window over that location's uh, history? and to compare the value from the time you're interested in um, with the average of the history just to see if it, you know, if it has a peak or if it goes up or down in general, so... Yeah, I did consider it, but I didn't do it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there's no specific but, but reason... That, that's a good idea. I think that's something you need, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. 
I came a couple of minutes too late. Maybe that was already said. If it was, then I apologize. Um, I mean, you are from TXT Data. That's the company behind the whole... Text Data. Text Data is the um, company behind yeah, the whole Yeah, that's project? basically my company. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. and the social, uh, this social radar, mm -hmm. um, what kind of project is that from a... Let me say, commercial standpoint, is that, a, is that an open source project? Uh, why are you doing that? What's the background? Um, yeah, so... Uh, for, um, for people who are, would like maybe to participate, mm -hmm. then the question is, in what way? What kind of... Yeah. So, the, the, I mean, it used to be a project that, that I just did for fun, and by the time we were kind of like thinking, maybe, you know, you could do a product with it, and blah, blah, blah. But then we kind of like moved in a bit of another direction. And so... Um, we still, I mean, I still think, I mean, it was, it, it was a very nice thing and it's kind of like, you know, in, in a city like Berlin, it's, it's kind of like really nice to just discover what's happening around you. But from a commercial point, I mean, one thing is, you know, we don't own the data, so we're very dependent on the data providers. And if we really use that in large volumes, we at some point have to pay and they, you know, I mean, if they change the API or um, just raise their fees. And so, well, we didn't follow it. We didn't follow up on it, to be honest. And then we just put it aside and still, because we thought it's a nice project and people, you know, I mean, it's, it's even useful. So it, it's, it's there on GitHub and there's a server actually that runs it. Um, I, can, I can give you a URL and you can play with it a bit. And um, yeah, but it's, there's no commercial interest. It has a, it's on GitHub, it has an Apache 2 license now and, you know, do with it whatever you want. So it's an open source project now? Yeah. Okay. More questions? Okay, then thank you very much for your talk. Mm -hmm.